people might notice some symptoms, especially coming from sea level, as, as low as 5,000 feet around the Denver metro area's elevation at 5280. So you can feel some mild symptoms in terms of some mild shortness of breath, even as at, at Denver's uh, altitude there. When you go higher to around 8,000 feet, people might start noticing symptoms or signs of acute mountain sickness. The higher you go, the more risk you run for potentially developing uh, worsened symptoms related to altitude changes. Headache's probably the hallmark symptom that people might notice first, um, but usually to be in the realm of classic acute mountain sickness or altitude sickness, uh, you got to throw in some other adjunct symptoms, and that would be additional neurologic symptoms. It could be uh, drowsiness, fatigue, lethargy, some sleep troubles at night. You can have a variety of heart-related issues. Most commonly, you might notice a rapid heartbeat or tachycardia. You might notice some uh, breathing-related issues in terms of just feeling uh, you know, more shorter breath. You can get some variety of gastrointestinal or stomach type symptoms. Everything from nausea, potentially to vomiting, to anorexia or lack of appetite. You can get uh, swelling in your hands and feet or your face as well. Um, those are all different things that can potentially occur as our body is reacting adversely to the changes in altitude. What it really ends up being is a spectrum from acute mountain sickness to worsening problems and the two most classic things that we see are entities called uh, HAPE, which is H-A-P-E or high altitude pulmonary edema. The other is HACE or H-A-C-E or high altitude cerebral edema. And those are life-threatening conditions. When you think about acute mountain sickness and how that affects you with some of the headache and other flu-like symptoms you might get, you got to consider there's a, a, a spectrum where that might be tending towards you know, moderate acute mountain sickness or early stages of high altitude cerebral edema or high altitude pulmonary edema. And in those circumstances, uh, you know, when your body has less oxygen, your, your brain just doesn't work as well. And you might be prone to some level of confusion and unsteady gait or things like that, that definitely, when you think about uh, trickier terrain on some of our more challenging 14ers, having problems like that can definitely set you up for potentially having a bad accident in our Colorado mountains.